I'm a little bit triggered and it's been on my mind for a week now, so please bear with me. Shavinism. Hi guys and welcome to Shavinism. My name is Yaron Shavit. I want to talk this week about something that's kind of pissing me off uh, lately. Uh, it's starting to affect me personally. Uh, so I thought I would I would talk about it uh, and maybe have an outlet for this uh, for this feeling that I have. I have a lot of people around me uh, that I feel that there's that they're consumed by bitterness. Uh, and this is my message: the world owes you nothing. Uh, and what I mean by that is I see a lot of people around me. They're very upset with with the um, the way people are treating them. So someone doesn't text them, or someone doesn't call them, or someone uh, cancels last minute. And, and they get all they get very emotional about it and and it usually ends up with senses like uh, they shouldn't do this to me a friend shouldn't do this to a friend um, I wouldn't have done it um, and so forth and everything is about me it's about me where where do I stand why am I not getting the the treatment that I think I deserve uh, and this is what I think I think the world owes you nothing no one owes you anything no one has to text you no one has to call you. Relationships are built that way. Sometimes you don't text other people that are waiting for your text. Sometimes you don't call other people who are waiting for your call. The, the expectation that someone needs to give you something is the number one reason of rejection. The, you'll get rejected over and over again if you accept, expect something that they're, from someone that they're not ready to give. It can be a text or a call, it can be a, you know, a relationship, whatever it is. I, th I think being, being consumed by bitterness about how people should treat you all the time is, a, is, a, is something that you need to, to let go of. And no one likes it when people demand more than they can give. Everyone first and foremost thinks about themselves. That's just how life is. People think about themselves. A lot of times I think to myself that if everyone else thinks about themselves as much as I think about myself, then they probably don't think about me as much as I think they do. I think that's just life. I think about myself and then I think about my closer circle. My girlfriend, Christina, uh, my family, and then there are my best friends. But, you know, for the, usually, for the most part, I go to sleep with myself in mind. My career, my life, my YouTube, my girlfriend, my family, my close friends. Um, and I, I try not to judge people by how they treat me all the time because it would never end and I wouldn't have any relationship in my life if every time I thought oh my god they didn't call me they didn't text me why didn't they call me um, and and it's I think it's part of this generation you know we're in a social media generation where we we expect you know an instant reply to everything I've had situations where I was where I was let's say I mean a few years back I had I had Bell's palsy which is facial paralysis I was very worried because I thought it might be a stroke. It's very, very, very worrying when your face goes numb uh, and you just can't move half of your face. That's what I have. It's called Bell's palsy. And now, in the first day, everyone was concerned because I put a, um, you know, I put a status on Facebook and everyone wanted to know what's going on. But then, after a few days, people kind of went on with their own lives. If I judged every friend I had by the fact that whether they called me or if they asked me after a week how I felt, I wouldn't have any friends. People just went on with their lives. Sometimes they remembered to ask me, sometimes they didn't. Some, some did it more frequently, some did it less frequently. It never, I would never end. I'd be just miserable in my own, in my own misery. And it's true as well. I mean, I'm on, I'm on YouTube. Not all my friends watch every video I make and comment and like. Actually, most don't. My best friends don't. This is a business I'm trying to start. And some of them are, are not, not always watching because they have families, they have kids and you know, sometimes they get to it and they go, oh, here's a video by your own, we'll watch it. But sometimes they don't. And that's okay. That's my point. It's okay for them not to be there. They're, no one owes you anything. And I say sometimes, you know, to people, I, I expect from people very little. And then people tell me, you know, that's a very uh, pessimistic way of looking at the world. It's a very negative way. And I don't think so. I think it's a very, it's a very, it's okay. I don't expect so I don't get disappointed. This is my bottom line. People don't do things for you or against you. Don't divide the world into people that do stuff for you and against you. People do things for themselves and sometimes you're affected. And as long as they don't betray you on a massive scale, you know, they don't, they wouldn't kill you to get another buck or they, they wouldn't sleep with your wife, they're, that's, they're okay. 
And if you keep pushing and demanding of them, you know, everything, you know, keep demanding them to, to be on call for you uh, and to cater for you, you're just going to push them away and it'll be counterproductive for what you're trying to achieve. Uh, so just, you know, live your life and don't be disappointed in anything, in, in little things that in the long run won't mean. If they don't give you the... If they don't give you the, the energy and the time that you think you need or that you deserve or you think you care about the relationship more than they care about the relationship, there's no point in guilt tripping them for it. Just move on. Put, I mean, if, if they're not giving you what you need from the relationship, that's true to any relationship, by the way. Whether it's a boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever. Unless it's family, which is always, a you know, that, that has more uh, gravitas and, and uh, that's that's much harder. But unless unless it's family, then... If they're not giving you what you need, that's okay. Then move on. Don't try to stay there and don't and and be miserable and just say, "Oh, I'm there how how did they treat me like this? Why are they doing this to me?" It's also it, it won't it won't serve you in the long run. And don't divide the world into people that give you what you need or don't give you what you need and their friends or their enemies. It's it's pointless. It's as pointless on a first date as it is as a life choice. Um, and I'm only talking about the social life. The world owes you nothing in, in every other aspect. I also see that the same with, with work-related stuff. You know, I, I hang around with a lot of actors. So actors, especially actors who haven't made it, or, uh, you know, a lot of them uh, kind of go into bitterness because they think they should be somewhere else. And I see and I see people being very bitter on you know why are why am I ain't I being cast? Why aren't my isn't my agent working for me? Why aren't directors calling me? And sometimes I look and I think, well, what have you done? What have you done to get yourself out of the situation that you're in? And the truth is nothing. They waited for a call from their agent a lot of times. And so you think, why? Well, why would you get a job if you're not if you're not putting the effort? I do two videos a week. I've been doing it for almost two years, and I'm not where I want to be. So what? I keep doing it. I keep pushing. I keep hoping that maybe the next one will be the one that will make it. The one that will go viral. The one that a director will see and go, I want him. Okay. I live, I live with it. I live with the consequences. What? I'm going to be upset that I'm not a six foot tall uh, guy with a six pack? So what? So I'm not a tall guy with a six pack. I'll find another way to work around that. I'm not going to be an action hero and I'm no longer 23. So what? Whew. Right. Guys, I'm sorry about this. I know this is a... Uh, I know this is a... Uh, it was a bit of a brainstorm. I usually write what I want to say, but I felt this would only be counterproductive and I really wanted to let this out. My bottom line of all this, just love yourself. Be comfortable with what you're doing. Be proud of your accomplishments. Don't expect anyone to give you anything. If you treat people with love and respect, you'll feel good about yourself. And every time you'll get it, you'll get it back. You'll just get it back. People are very, you know, Maya Angelou has a saying, uh, I think she passed away. Maya Angelou said, people will forget what you said, they will forget what you did, but they will always remember how you made them feel. And that's very true. Try to make other people feel good and they'll probably bring it back. But if, but if you make them feel guilty for not giving you the time of the day, for not replying to your text, whatever it is, and you answer in, in, in the bitterness that's around you, um, don't succumb to, to the temptation of bitterness, is a, is, a, is a quote I also like. It's Martin Luther King. So guys, don't succumb to the temptation of bitterness. Just breathe and be merry. And that's it. It's Jewish New Year. Uh, it's Jewish New Year in, in two weeks. So it's a good time to sort of leave everything behind. Move on to the next year. I know most of you are not Jewish, but, but uh, it's a good chance to do it, is all I'm saying. If not, you can wait till Christmas. But please, leave the bitterness behind you and move forward and demand only of yourself. And anything else that you get, be grateful for. That's all I got this week. I'll see you on Thursday. Bye, guys.